Welcome to On Campus at SUNY New Falls. My name is Rob Morali. I teach journalism here at the college. Our guest today is someone who many of you in Ulster County and the Mid-Hudson Valley will know because for many years he was the person who decided how our tax money was spent as part of the uh, Ulster County Legislature. And of course you may know him also, his name is often in the New York Times as an expert source on state and uh, local politics. Uh, his name is Gerald Benjamin and he is currently an Associate Vice President here at the College at New Paltz and has been a political scientist with us for many years. We welcome to the program Dr. Gerald Benjamin. Rob, good to be here. Gary, thank you for joining us today. <coughs> You've uh, worn many hats in your uh, four decades here at the College of New Paltz. Your latest uh, hat is as the Associate Vice President for the Center for Research, Education, and Outreach. So I thought we could talk a little bit about this new institution that the college has created. Talk a little bit about you recently uh, stepped down as uh, the Dean of Liberal Arts, where you were the Dean of the largest uh, unit here at the College of New Paltz, uh, the School of Liberal Arts and Science, where you were Dean there for 12 years. And of course, you are uh, an astute political observer, so I can't wait to get your, uh, your, your comments on the uh, current uh, presidential election and some of the state and local developments also. Let's start with the Center for Research, Education, and Outreach. This is uh, something new the college has created. You are now the Associate Vice President and will be directing that unit. Can you tell us what this new uh, unit is, is trying to do or will, will attempt to do? Well, I've, I've long believed that we uh, should have a regionally focused um, research activity that uh, considers questions of public policy, uh, government reform, government structure, accountability for government. Um, and uh, I found a president who agreed, <laughs> and and with Steve's encouragement and support from uh, financial support from Senator Schumer, we've been able to uh, uh, create such a center. Now the college is involved with the community in an enormous number of ways, and in all its academic units and many of its administrative units. And as a major employer in the in the, in the Hudson Valley, of course, has enormous economic impact, and uh, people who work here were involved in their churches, the Little League, all kinds of volunteer activities, uh, committees of the gov various governments. So uh, we're not doing something uh, that's uh, brand new in a sense, because people, but, but it does give focus and attention to questions of public uh, policy and public concern, also tries to engage the students and the, uh, and the uh, faculty, uh, bring their skills to bear uh, uh, to meet regional needs at the county level, the town level, the regional level. So how will, you, will your center complement what, what you already do? Will, will, it, would, will it basically help focus what we already do? Well, I think we'll do some new things. Mm -hmm. um, we will try not to interfere with things that are going well. Uh, uh, we will, uh, there, are, there are strong relationships between the School of Education, for example, and the, and the regional schools, the, right. uh, and uh, that will certainly continue. That's not going to be the business I'm in. Mm -hmm. uh, but it will pr provide focus, direction, I think some new things. For example, well, we yeah, what kind of new things do you, do you have in mind or do you envision or would you well, like to see happen? Well, the, the primary focus is public policy analysis, uh, structural analysis, greater efficiency and effectiveness for in local government, government for local for government, government for local government. Yep. The, uh, I've been spent my career working on local government issues. One example is uh, that I plan to publish a uh, uh, and I am publishing a series of of uh, uh, papers uh, that will come out several times a year, um, and this one is on equity in the property tax uh, burden in Ulster County, and it shows uh, that we have 55 different tax burdens in Ulster County, uh, and uh, suggests that we can do better in making these uh, uh, fair and distributing them in a fair way. Uh, this was written with a former student who just graduated, Rachel John, and one of my goals is to have uh, student faculty research, which are now um, we're now emphasizing the college as a capstone experience, the very best of that research that's regionally oriented published uh, as part of this paper series. Another thing we're doing is uh, we hope com we're competing to do a major study for Ulster County to encourage intergovernmental collaboration. We have a study underway, Eve Walter Marin, the sociology department on uh, drug use and reported drug use and experience in the schools in, in Ulster County. Into government, governmental meaning what sense? Uh, I mean, we, we had this long dispute in New Paltz of the village versus the town. Should well, we have overlapping governments? Is that the kind of intergovernmental? Well, that's an issue, and that's a, that's an important <coughs> issue, but not the uh, uh, focus of this paper. Ulster County got a grant from the Department of uh, State uh, to encourage collaboration uh, between the county and, um, and 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 the towns, and among the the towns themselves, and. Uh, this grant is being, uh, we're competing with Mid-Hudson Pattern as our partner and, and a number of other 
people we've engaged with this to to uh, um, be chosen to do this research and focus on such areas as uh, highways to see if we can get more bang for the buck out of money that's uh, being spent uh, now mm -hmm. through collaboration and how that would be done, what's the best practice around the state. We hire, we engaged a guy uh, from Binghamton uh, uh, to do that p piece of it and he's I think the state expert on highway uh, organization and management. We have a person from Albany and one of the goals we're going to of, of, of this effort is to create a network of research centers across the state within SUNY that can then help the state by seeing uh, when we undertake uh, public policy initiatives, how they're working across New York and whether we need to approach the problem differently in different places to get results. A lot of this dovetails with you know, essentially what your career has been, which is obviously one foot in you know, academe as a political science professor, administrator, of course, but also another foot you know, very actively engaged in um, the real world of uh, politics and the real world of public policy and government. So in some ways, this is a perfect fit for you because it's really what you have done. In fact, I guess right now, uh, one of the things you've been very actively involved in is about to, to culminate here with, with elections in, in Ulster County and that we will be actually electing someone to run our, our county government. Right. We, uh, I was involved in the charter uh, re reform effort in Ulster County and we were successful in uh, getting a charter adopted by the legislature and the people, so we now will have a, an entirely uh, or substantially new uh, governmental structure with an elected executive, uh, separation of power system, uh, very important, a controller who will uh, bring accountability and oversight. We've had some unfortunate uh, uh, spending problems in, in Ulster County and I think uh, we've addressed that structurally and in a good way and, and uh, uh, also um, uh, I think the uh, apportionment of the legislature is addressed in a, in a way that will take some of the partisan can't take all the partisanship mm -hmm. out, but we'll take some of the partisanship out. So we've restructured the government. It's hard to do, and I'm very proud of that uh, achievement. And, and we have elections this year to staff that new structure, and, and, the, and the new government form will be uh, going forward uh, in January. A lot of this is you know, esoteric to the public and perhaps you know, goes over their, their head in terms of seeing how it might really mean anything for them. Although when you start to talk about tax bases, and better use of tax money that perhaps they're, you know, they, they, they may start to pay a little bit of attention. But how does all this in the end really, could it possibly benefit taxpayers, citizens of Ulster County, citizens of Mid-Hudson Valley? Well, I think that uh, uh, as you get to be a uh, $320, $330 million operation, uh, you have to have a chief executive who's a, who's who's You're talking about the county. In the county, right? Uh, that, that puts aside the you know the size of t the towns. You have to have a chief executive who uh, is accountable and who, uh, in fact, is in charge. And we ha haven't we didn't have that before. So very, I think very undemocratic, actually. Well, um, it's it's un in a way unfocused. I mean, the, the people in charge were the legislature; they were elected. But right. when, when everybody's in charge, nobody's in charge. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I could talk about this a long time, but the net of it is that, that, that uh, we're going to have somebody charged giving direction to the government and holding people who are running departments accountable. And we're going to, I think, make very substantial uh, economies because somebody will be uh, in charge and accountable. Another thing that's very important that was less focused was that y you get a seat at the table in the intergovernmental relationships between the state and the counties. The counties do most of the, most of the lo local work with regard to delivering services in New York State. So there's a lot of intergovernmental dynamics and when you have an elected executive you get a seat at the table with the other counties that are big and important and mm -hmm. you have a bigger say. Right. Uh, and I know that for sure because I was uh, the chief elected in Ulster County for a for while. For uh, nine years? Uh, well, no, I was elected for 12 years, 12 but years. the chief elected for two years. For two years. Okay. And uh, legislative uh, leaders like I was, aren't given the same regard and included in the same way as elected executives. Chair, we need to stop you right here. Um, right. I'm Rob Moraldi. Uh, we're talking to Gerald Benjamin. Please stay with us. I'm so glad I've chosen the School of Business at SUNY New Paltz. So far, I've taken classes in marketing, management, accounting, finance. My professors have worked in all facets of business. They help me in the classroom and by getting me involved in programs outside the classroom. I learn from faculty and students from all over the world. The students, the faculty, and the dean all work together. It's like a family. SUNY New Paltz, the preferred business school of the Hudson Valley.
Welcome back to On Campus at SUNY New Paltz. I'm Rob Morali. We're talking today with uh, Gerald Benjamin, longtime political observer, political scientist, uh, currently the uh, Associate Vice President for the Center for Research, Education, and Outreach here at the College of New Paltz. Jerry, one more question on your center. Uh, you recently received a $285,000 federal grant to, uh, I guess, to help you get up and, up and started. Can you tell us how that came about, uh, who we have to thank for that, and what exactly you might hope to do with that, that, that startup grant? Well, we, uh, when we decided to go forward with this uh, idea, we approached uh, Senator uh, Schumer's office, and uh, he, he was very enthusiastic about it. And uh, through his good offices, we were able to get uh, a grant to start up the center. Now, the grant is, uh, in fact, focused, uh, substantively focused, and, uh, and has uh, um, the, the project that we're going to do under this grant is to develop measures of, uh, of um, regional um, s sort of uh, that measures toward regional goals mm -hmm. that will be, uh, uh, that will find agreement among people both who have uh, interest in development in the region and people who have interest in conservation in the region. So we can establish uh, benchmarks, mm -hmm. agreed benchmarks uh, about the direction of our region in, into the future uh, and avoid some of the start from scratch fighting over every project that gets proposed in the region, we hope. And one thing we're going to do over time is uh, publish uh, the, these benchmark measures. I'd also like, this is a little arcane and academic, but I'd like to uh, 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 create an index that is sort of a conflation of different measures that will give a single number that gives some indication of how the region is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, people are familiar with the consumer price index, how, the, how much inflation there is in the economy. There's also a human well-being index that's been supported by the Rockefeller Foundation to determine how well people are doing from a health mm -hmm. uh, point of view and an economic point of view in different parts of the country. I'd like to find a uh, a nice uh, name for this index that would uh, be uh, how the that would measure how the uh, uh, region, the Mid Hudson region, is doing and moving towards the goals it agrees upon for itself. So mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of work and, and a lot of consultation in the next 18 months as we uh, move this project. Mm -hmm. uh, if I could switch gears from the region to the nation, um, you are a political scientist, well-known uh, observer of the political front, and so I can't resist the opportunity to pick your brain a little bit about the election, the presidential election that we are currently uh, in, embroiled in. Uh, and it's a fascinating election in so many ways. It's, it's momentous in certain, cer certain ways. We have, you know, perhaps the last time we'll ever have a World War II veteran running for the presidency. You never know, but probably we have, for the first time, an African-American uh, nominated by the Democrats. Can you kind of frame this election for us in terms of, of how you see it? Well, it's an extraordinarily interesting election because it's so close right now. Well, by all accounts, it shouldn't be uh, close. The economy is not doing well. Um, uh, the uh, we are in an unpot. We are in a war. There are differences of opinion about how well the war is going now. But I, it's fair to say it's an unpopular war, uh, based on majority judgments. Uh, we have a president whose leadership is in in. in in question, to say the least, mm -hmm. he's, he, he's got very low uh, approval ratings. Um, so uh, the incumbent party should not be uh, competitive, but it is, and uh, that's extraordinary. Now, uh, some would say that, and, and I don't, I don't want to, I won't say that uh, because it might be taken as partisan. But it takes real work, without putting a label on it, to be in a competitive situation against an incumbent party, and the Democrats have apparently achieved that. But they've achieved it for extraordinary reasons. They've nominated an African-American uh, person for president, a person of, of, of great quality. And uh, that's never happened before. The Republicans have nominated a woman for the first time on their ticket, although not for the first time in American history, as mm -hmm. Geraldine Ferraro was nominated in, by the Democrats in, in 1984 for vice, vice president. So right. we don't know what the consequence of an African-American on the top of the ticket is for um, the potential outcome of the election. Um, I think uh, the historic choice that the Democratic Party make, has made is, is, uh, is, is partly uh, the reason for the closeness in the polls. But I think this closeness is uh, transitory. I think that uh, political science um, models, and the American Political Science Association had a panel on this, and there are, are people who build models, predictive models, show that uh, Obama based on all the analysis and not taking account of race is, is um, 
very likely to win the popular vote. Mm -hmm. The question is, again, whether uh, the electoral vote. He can carry certain uh, states. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and there his uh, choice of a running mate may be consequential. What people forget is that uh, vice president's choices have been very marginal mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, in affecting the, the outcome the decide, of presidential. It's not the deciding factor for people. But, you know, we're in a different world. The communication system is different. Right. Uh, the focus has been different. So uh, there are uncertainties in every specific circumstance. How important will the debates be, do you think? Um, even before the debates, the joint appearance on 9-11, I think, is important mm -hmm. because it, in a way, elevates Obama. Right. You know, the uh, McCain's uh, claim, uh, of course, is to uh, leadership experience, and uh, he has a heroic uh, reputation based right. upon his prisoner of war experience. And I actually was in Hanoi, and I stood in the room he was kept in, and I saw the photographs mm -hmm. and uh, walked through the yard. And it's just a very, very a moving experience, a compelling experience for an American to do that. But, but you're right, it is remarkable that, you know, given the Republican issues and problems, the unpopular president, the unpopular war, the, the economy, that they are at this point, you know, s so close. And it also is remarkable because in the sense Obama has run a good campaign. There haven't been any gaffes, there haven't been any issues or problems. He's a good candidate, he's a, he's a marvelous speaker, and yet we still see, at least at this point, fairly early in the campaign, that they are well, on I think neck. there's a big bounce right now uh, for, for the Republicans in the, in the wake of the uh, convention. Also, right. there's been an engagement of uh, a constituency that was uh, skeptical, the uh, Christian right, mm -hmm. because of the vice presidential choice. So well, you I implied they've also they've done certain things that have been in their favor, um, the Republicans. Right. So I think, that, I think that right now is a transitory moment, and I think... Uh, Going forward, the uh, Democratic popular advantage will reassert. Um, there are some issues about uh, financing the campaign, Obama's choice uh, not to take presidential money, and whether mm -hmm. he can uh, uh, get the resources he needs. I think I think that that uh, as election day approaches, that will not be an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, because his uh, constituency is extraordinarily mobilized and committed. Significance of race and gender in this election, obviously they're, they're both they're both in play. The, the it's female, what make, that's election. what makes it. Uh, um, it's what makes it so unpredictable. I mean, race, uh, ra race makes it so unpredictable. We have something called the Bradley effect that, uh, that's taken the name the Bradley effect based upon an election for the governor of California. We had polls suggesting Bradley would win and yet he lost and, and, and the reason was it was very hard to measure mm -hmm. the effect of uh, him being an African American because people won't won't talk about it. Right, it hasn't surfaced as an issue. There's been no overt racism, occasional kind of references that are perhaps offensive, but nothing has o overtly surfaced. Yeah, it's interesting that NPR is running a series on the effect of race on the election, and, uh -huh. and in a way, by elevating the discussion to visibility, it might be a bit of an inoculation. You know, it, it, will, it will give people a chance to talk about it, and by mm -hmm. talking about it, they can think it, uh, think it through to a greater degree. But I think there are also uh, uh, issues uh, uh, of, of real concern. I mean, o Obama has, uh, his career has advanced very rapidly. He, he, Kennedy was younger when he ran for the president, I mean, but Kennedy had more experience in the Senate, more experience in right. Congress. So, so, the, so is, there's he, is he ready question, of course? Yeah, it's, 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 a without, it's a legitimate uh, question, and, and people are back and forth on the nature of experience, what kind of experience counts, and so on. Mm -hmm. Was experience as a prisoner of war? Um, Valuable and useful uh, for somebody who would be president. These questions are 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 there. There are equities on both sides of the debate, but you know the there are real issues, and it's not just the question of race. There are real concerns that people have, and 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 they're thinking them through as they should. I've always told my uh, in the old days when I uh, I used to teach a presidency course before mm -hmm. we got uh, a national expert on our faculty on the subject, and 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 uh, I would say to people, I would say to my students, you know what they used to say in high school both the issues, not the person, I said, well, forget about that. I mean, what person do you want in the room making a decision on life and death uh, that you can't imagine will come up? Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerry, I need to stop you right here. Right. I'm Rob Morali. We're talking to political scientist Gerald Benjamin. Please come back. is rich in artistic tradition. And that tradition is on display at the Samuel Dorsky Museum of Art on the SUNY New Paltz campus. This is really where they painted. 
it's just terrific to have it right here. Visit us and help celebrate our fifth anniversary. Welcome back to On Campus at SUNY New Paltz. I'm Rob Morali. We're talking with Gerald Benjamin, who is the uh, Associate Vice President for the Center for Research, Education, and Outreach, but of course a well-known political scientist also. Jerry, we were talking about presidential politics. Uh, we talked a little bit about Ob Obama. I'm interested in, you know, the J uh, John McC McCain is basically supposedly a maverick. What's your sense of McCain as a maverick? You also have some, you know, longtime Republican credentials. So, right. do you see him as this Republican maverick, maybe more in the tradition of a Rockefeller or the Rockefeller Republican well, wing? He, he, first of all, he he has uh, been comfortable in his party for his whole career. Start with that. He's not been at the center of his party on a number of issues, um, especially social issues. But not to the right. Well, he's he's not at, he's he's not at the center. The center of the party is. The, uh, at the at the right, he's yes. certainly not been with the party activists who are increasingly uh, conservative on social issues. Um, he has taken some very, um, I think, important stands. For example, on campaign finance reform, which is very important to me uh, as it's a way of making elections more democratic. Uh, to call his career, entire career, the career of a maverick, would is is an overstatement. Um, the, the, uh, it's interesting, the, the manipulation of symbols that occurs in presidential mm -hmm. elections. I think he has to, se obviously has to separate himself from the president in order to get elected, and using that right. word uh, is helpful. But um, I don't think it's uh, descriptive when you look at his whole career. But then the choice of Sarah Palin may be symbolic in the sense that it is an embrace to some degree of the, of the more conservative, um, you know, perhaps Christian right. Uh, well, that it's, part it's, that. A, it's a way of, of, of assuring the enthusiasm of that constituency, which is skeptical mm -hmm. about him, right. because of the ways in which his uh, values were more, uh, uh, I would say, in a way, more traditional values. Uh, for example, the choice position uh, historically has been supported by upper middle class uh, Protestant women, uh, right. and and uh, certainly that was a traditional Republican constituency. So, you know, you can manipulate the symbols and the words any way you want to, but that, 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 that selection... So you're not quite sure if he would govern as a maverick, so to speak? I think he would be liberated by being elected. I mm -hmm. think that's one thing that we don't, um, uh, haven't fully attended to. I think he has a one-term uh, presidency. He, he's a one-term president and right. uh, he, can, he can lead. But what's critical is that the leadership of the country will be selected from the Republican constituency. So it's not just who you're electing, Mm -hmm. but all the other people who would be in power, people have focused on the Supreme Court, and that's right. a critical uh, element right. of, of the choice in this election. Jerry, jump to New York politics, which you are particularly expert at. Um, I, I'm still bewildered by what happened with Elliot Spitzer. I don't mean personally what happened with Elliot Spitzer, but this incredibly remarkable fast exit of, of someone who was elected with an overwhelming majority, and then there is this almost week, 10-day uh, scandal with uh, prostitutes, and he is out of office. Never been charged. May never be charged. Uh, it's not quite clear what lawbreaking took place, if any. And yet, this governor, who people had such great hope for, is gone. Well, he, it's interesting. I think the hypocrisy was the critical mm -hmm. element of it, and, and second, the style which alienated his own party was another element of it. You know, he had right. when he got into trouble, he had no friends. Mm. Uh, he had attacked the legislature. He had a major fight over the Hevesy problem. He, he, he when when Hevesy was discredited, I think for uh, uh, for reasons, he, he I think he could have written it out, but he separated himself from the control, and the controller had to resign. And then when the fight over the appointment of a successor, he was right. he was uh, aggressively uh, uh, engaged with the with the Democratic Assembly, which should have been a source of major support. He was in conflict with uh, the Republicans in the Senate over uh, his use of, uh, or alleged actual use, I think, of, of the state police to keep track of the majority leader. Right. I, he had no friends, so when the he got the into hypocrisy trouble. Is, is, is the hypocrisy, is, is, is it the private indiscretion? or is it, is No, the hypocrisy is establishing a so uh, an absolute moral standard. Uh, the first thing he did when, right. he, when he came into office was uh, issue an executive order on uh, on ethical conduct that, mm -hmm. that I had to sign and many people had to sign. Right. Also, his, the expectations were enormous. I worked in the transition and I was appointed by him to a, a commission and, and uh, I had enormous expectations and, you know, he, he had uh, 
uh, feet of clay. So, so when he got into trouble for uh, his involvement with, uh, with a prostitute, um, he was isolated and out there, and, and it was in the, in the frame of all these other, uh, mm -hmm. uh, other, uh, other issues and practices, and, and he couldn't survive. He had no friends. And the new governor, um, your, 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 your sense that we're in a, a tr you know, time of tremendous uh, economic problems, and it's going to obviously has affected and will affect the New York State budget. Um, how can he manage that? Will he be able to manage that? Well, I think he's, uh, I think he's a very smart guy. You know, he's, he's a physically limited guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, made, he's made history because he's the first African-American governor of New York, uh, and I think he's an engaging person, and he's, he's done extraordinary things with, you know, as, as a person with physical limits. He's, he's legally blind, and, um, and, and he's decided that uh, being uh, fiscally uh, prudent and conservative is the path to re-election. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and, and that's, I wear, you know, as a university person, I want the university to have the resources it needs. Yeah, real a, quickly, a, what, a, what, a, what a, effect a, will that have on our on our budget, perhaps, uh, in the, well, in the coming it's already years? Well, it's already had an effect. Uh, we are, uh, um, you know, we hit to the tune of uh, three million dollars, and I, uh, at this at this campus, and a hundred million dollars, and almost a hundred million dollars in the university statewide. Mm -hmm. uh, we need those resources to operate an institu a quality institution, and and. Uh, uh, it may be the case that the burden will be shifted to the students and their families uh, because uh, maintaining the institution uh, and the kind of institution we want and need to have requires uh, resources. Jerry, real quickly, I have a minute to go. And speaking of our students, I wanted to, and you know, you for 12 years were dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Science, and many of us worry about what it is we're teaching our, our, our this, this next generation. What, what, what do we need to do for this generation of students who is now going to enter a, you know, a very troubled, problematic world? Well, we need to give them the, the skills and the capacity to think hard, and, and a liberal arts education is fundamental. We have the liberal arts majors, but also the liberal arts courses at the core of the curriculum in the other fields. And uh, I tell them a uh, well-educated liberal arts major can, can enrich their lives and, uh, forever because they're self-educated once they become educated in, mm -hmm. in liberal arts. Uh, and sometimes families don't understand. Jerry, I just want to uh, tell our viewers that on November 23rd at the Mohawk Mountain House, there will be the annual New Paltz Gala, which this year will be honoring Gerald Benjamin for his 40 years of service to the uh, community and to the College of New Paltz, and we hope to see many of you there. Thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Benjamin. Rob, it's always a Dr. Morales, it's always a good